Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. To discover a little girl's special abilities, scientists have locked her up with four vicious dogs ready to tear her to pieces. Today we will recap the story of the 2018 movie The Witch, Part 1, The Subversion. Over a long period of time, cruel experiments on children in different parts of the world are carried out in order to create superhumans. Events unfold in a South Korean secret laboratory where mass slaughter has taken place. Dr. Beck inspects the crime scene and notices that one of the affected children is still moving. She gives the order to shoot the child in the head. The little girl manages to escape from the lab. The thugs, led by Mr. Choi, pursue the fugitive, but lose her in the woods. They manage to recover another fugitive, a little boy, but he is of no interest to Dr. Beck. The woman is convinced that the runaway girl will die on the run anyway. She orders Mr. Choi to continue his search for the child, but to report to general staff that the target has been destroyed. The girl falls unconscious on a farm, where she is discovered by the owner, Mr. Gu. He takes the child to the house, where a doctor examines her. Her condition has stabilized, but the doctor is concerned that she remembers nothing of her past life. Through her sleep, the girl grabs Mrs. Gu's hand and a couple of farmers decide to adopt the little girl. Ten years later, a girl named Ja Yoon lives an ordinary life, helping her adoptive parents with household chores. She tries to buy feed for her livestock, but the salesman won't sell her the goods because the farmers still haven't paid for the last purchase. The seller's son is in love with the pretty girl and sneaks the feed into her car, for which he gets a scolding from his father. Ja Yoon arrives at the farm, where her father asks her to visit Mrs. Gu. It turns out that the girl's adoptive mother suffers from Alzheimer's disease, which is gradually taking over her brain. She often forgets to eat and cannot remember what day it is. It takes a lot of money to treat her, which has caused the family to have big financial problems. There is a report on television about attacks on farms in which an unknown person kills all the livestock. Mr. Gu wants to sell some of his cows before they fall in value altogether. In the evening, Ja Yoon takes a shower and drops of water run down the scar with a serial number on her back. Suddenly, the girl has a severe headache, which fortunately passes quickly. Hoping to help her mother, she searches the internet for information about Alzheimer's disease and finds several doctors who treat it. The next morning, Ja Yoon goes to school with her best friend Myung Hee, the daughter of the local police chief. The friend shows her an advertisement for a national song contest and offers to enter the contest. The grand prize is $500,000. It's enough to buy food for the cows and pay her mother's hospital bills. Ja Yoon has never sung before, but decides to enter the competition. As a result, she gets the highest score from the jury and advances to the next stage, which will be held in Seoul. In the evening, the family of Jae Yoon and Myung he watched the girls' performance together on TV. She amazes everyone with her melodious singing, but that is not her only talent. The girl shows the jury tricks, which delights the audience, but makes her parents uneasy. Myung he tries to reassure them and tells them that her unique skills are popular now and that this will help Jae Yoon win the competition. Suddenly the phone rings in the house, but no one on the other side of the receiver speaks. This worries the girl's parents even more. Jae Yoon promises her mother that she will quit singing as soon as she wins the grand prize. At night, Mr. Choi comes to the farmhouse and finally manages to find the girl. Jae Yoon begins to have a new headache, which turns into agony. In the morning, the girls hop on a train that will take them to Seoul. The caring Myung he shares eggs with her friend, which she immediately greedily shoves into her mouth. On the way, the girl dreamily contemplates becoming the manager of rising star Jae Yoon and getting 50% of her fee. Their conversation elicits laughter from a young man who has been eavesdropping on them the whole time. He looks at Jae Yoon curiously and says he knows her. However, it doesn't look like the girl remembers him. The stranger is surprised that the girl now has a name of her own, since they were all called by numbers before. He recalls her former nickname, The Witch. This perplexes the girl even more. The intrusive passenger does not believe that her companion does not remember him and puts his hand to her head. His actions start to bring tears to Jae Yoon's eyes, and Myung he chases the stranger away from her friend. The guy isn't particularly happy with this outcome, but quickly finds someone to vent his anger on. He is pushed by a passenger in the train's vestibule, breaking his arm and snapping his neck. The friends arrive late to the pageant because Jae Yoon gets very tired while walking fast. Her performance is watched live by Mr. Choi and Dr. Beck. The woman is insanely happy that her best creation is still alive. Jae Yoon wins the majority of the viewer votes and advances to the quarterfinals. After the competition, she has another severe seizure. This time her condition worsens and her nose bleeds. She recalls being told by her doctor that she has two to three months at most until the disease completely destroys her. The only thing that can help is a bone marrow transplant from her biological parents. Myung he finds her friend in the bathroom and helps her outside. Suddenly the girls are surrounded by Dr. Beck's men. They politely ask Jae Yoon to go with them. The thugs are distracted by a group of children coming out of the building, and the friends manage to escape. Back in their town, 
The girls wait a long time for the bus. The reason for the delay is the guy from the train who slashed the bus's tires. He drives up to Jay Yoon in his car and tells her that she needs to hurry if she wants to catch her parents alive. The girl immediately rushes off in the direction of the farm and asks her friend to call her father to check on her house. The guy and his crew get to the farm first. They plan on reprisal with Jay Yoon's foster parents, but the police pull up to their house. Chief Du walks up to their car and politely asks the teenagers to show their IDs. After a while, the girls make it to the farm but find that the police car is empty. This makes them even more worried. With the help of her powers, Jae Yoon discovers her father's location and breaks into the house. Fortunately, her family is alive. Mr. Gu and the policeman quietly play a game of cards. Before leaving, Chief Du informs the girl that the unknown young men were Americans and wonders if she knows them. But Jae Yoon still has no idea who her pursuers are. In the evening, a gang of underage thugs sneaks into the house of a doctor who took part in the experiment on children. For fun, they finished off his entire family and then him. The surviving guard tries to shoot the gang leader, but the guy is endowed with superpowers. Using telekinesis, he takes the gun out of the man's hands and forces him to shoot himself in the head. Dr. Beck meets Mr. Choi for lunch. She suggests that the man take a temporary break from business and go on vacation to Europe. The man realizes that his boss is up to something, but dares not cross her. Dr. Beck declares that Jae Yoon is no longer his problem and she intends to bring her best experiment back. Mr. Choi calls the girl a monster to get rid of, but Dr. Beck has his own plans for her. Later, Mr. Choi secretly meets with the professor who ran the child experimentation program in South Korea. He is concerned that the researchers involved in his project have begun to die one by one. Mr. Choi reports that two months ago a group of children who may have been involved in the atrocities were brought in from general headquarters in America. Their identities are difficult to determine, but his team is working on it. The professor gives the order to get rid of Jae Yoon, but preserve the girl's brain. It is unique and will prove their successful experiment. A man asks Mr. Choi to show him his hand, which he hides under a glove. His limb is blackened and looks lifeless. The professor promises that the girl's brain is the key to curing his ailment. In the evening, Jae Yoon and Myung Hee's family get together for dinner. The girlfriend passionately tells those present about the importance of the fan club and offers to hire people to support Jae Yoon in the competition. Mom looks at the girls at a loss. Her condition begins to deteriorate and she no longer recognizes her daughter. For a moment, the woman recalls moments from their past where little Jae Yoon was searching for information about her real parents. At night, the girl awakens from nightmares related to her childhood. The pain in her head becomes unbearable and the girl finds it hard to hold back her screaming. When the attack passes, Jae Yoon hears her mother's anxious voice, in whose room Dr. Beck's men have snuck in. The girl runs toward her, but is stopped by the thug's gun. She is horrified to see that her friend has also been taken hostage and has a knife to her throat. The leader of the gang, who has confronted her since she was a child, comes out to her. Back then, the little girl nearly liquidated the man, leaving him with deep scars on his face. Jae Yoon begs to let her go and continues to insist that she is not the girl everyone is looking for. The mercenary gives her time to prove her point, or his men will slaughter Myung Hee. The thug makes a demonstrative cut to the girl's neck. Jae Yoon keeps crying and repeating that they were wrong. At one point, she changes her face and shows her true abilities. She snatches a weapon from one of the thugs and, with the speed of lightning, mercilessly slays every one of the thugs. She leaves their leader for last, pinning him against the wall. With an indifferent look she beats the bandit to a pulp, repeating that she is not that girl. In his last breath, he calls the girl a monster, for which he takes a bullet to the head. Jae Yoon examines her hands and as if she is coming to after a trance. The girl looks at her friend, but she backs away from her in horror. The guy from the train bursts in, clearly delighted by the massacre. He calls the girl one of a kind and wonders if her memory has come back to her. Jae Yoon is still perplexed by what's happening. Then the guy switches his attention to Myung Hee and asks her if she has noticed anything strange about her friend. After all, she's a straight-A student at school, but no one has ever seen her study. The girl has never sung, but has easily become a favorite in a song contest. She can speak any language if she hears it at least once. The boy is sure that Jae Yoon can be the best at anything if she wants to be, but she cleverly hides her abilities so as not to draw attention to herself. Jae Yoon asks to tell her the truth about herself and the young man shows her the scar she left him when she escaped from the lab. Scraps of memories arise in the girl's mind, but are immediately cut short. The boy invites her to follow him, otherwise he will finish off everyone she knows in the village. The girl is forced to go with him and asks her friend to take care of her parents. On the way, the guy shows Jae Yoon the information he found about her adoptive family. Mr. Gu used to work as a successful architect in the United States, but he lost his son and grandson in a car accident and moved with his wife to live on a farm. A family with such a sad history simply had no choice but to adopt a little girl. They arrive at the old lab where it all began. The young boy's girlfriend is jealous of him and does not share everyone's admiration for her cool abilities, something she is not afraid to tell the girl. Jae Yoon is led into a locked room and chained to a chair. Behind the glass, Dr. Beck watches her admiringly. 
She warmly greets her captive and orders a subordinate to inject her with a serum. Suddenly, it is as if a light goes on in the girl's eyes and she begins to remember her childhood. She was one of the children whose brains were being experimented on by a group of researchers. The children were transplanted with physically perfect genes and raised amidst violence. They were beaten and put through inhuman trials. Dr. Beck reports that she was the only test subject whose brain was closest to the ideal. During one of the tests, little Jae Yoon was locked alone in a room with four vicious dogs. In a matter of seconds, the girl slaughtered all the animals, which once again proved her leadership among children with superpowers. However, when the researchers were close to completing the perfect experiment, the headquarters began to express concern. Children with such incredible physical strength and mental abilities became difficult to control. The results of Jae Yoon's generation were more successful than the previous generation of genetic experiments. Mr. Choi had been one of the test subjects in the past, but had become only one of the failed projects. The headquarters decided to incapacitate all children of the new generation in order to keep the world safe from monsters. However, they underestimated Jae Yoon, thinking she was just an ordinary child. On the day of her escape, she destroyed anyone who got in her way. Dr. Beck's people searched for the unusual girl for 10 years. In that time her brain should have exploded, so they were very surprised to see her on a television show. As if to prove her abilities, Jae Yoon began performing tricks during her show, juggling a microphone with telekinesis. Jae Yoon begins to have another migraine attack and coughs up red fluid. Dr. Beck informs her that her symptoms have peaked and she will soon be gone. To control her symptoms, the girl has suppressed her body's physical abilities all her life. Therefore, she tired quickly and was often referred to as weak. However, the disease cannot be stopped and the only thing that can help is a bone marrow transplant. But Jae Yoon does not know her biological parents. Dr. Beck knew this and created a panacea that can save the girl from pain and care. She orders a subordinate to inject Jae Yoon with a blue serum. With this vaccine, the girl will be able to use her abilities to the maximum but it will only last a month. She has to administer the serum every month or her symptoms will only worsen. Dr. Beck impatiently asks if the captive enjoys such a generous gift. Suddenly Jae Yoon's facial expression changes and she smiles with pleasure. This all turns out to be a perfectly thought out plan by the girl to get her own medicine. She purposely showed off her talents at the contest to get Dr. Beck's attention. The young man realizes that Jae Yoon has outsmarted them and they must destroy her before she gets to them. Dr. Beck becomes a hostage to his own arrogance. Now, with her enhanced powers, Jae Yoon easily gets rid of her shackles and smashes the guard's head against the wall. Dr. Beck orders nerve gas to be led into the room to immobilize the girl, but she escapes through the ceiling. Moments later, Jae Yoon appears behind the woman's back, getting rid of her guards. Pointing a gun at her, the girl confesses that she has never forgotten her or the day they were all about to be exterminated. To save her life, she forced her maker to find her. She recalls smiling faintly every time drive. Beck's men acted the way she wanted them to. Jae Yoon shoots Dr. Beck in the leg and orders her to be taken to the lab where the rest of the serums are kept. Meanwhile, Mr. Choi bursts into the lab with the special forces to eliminate all the teenagers with superpowers, especially Jae Yoon. He orders the soldiers to aim at their heads, as this is the only way to destroy them. He recognizes one of the teenagers as the boy from the lab, whom he found in the woods 10 years ago. A real fight begins, but the special forces manage to take out the two supernatural teenagers. The girl enters the fight and easily destroys one fighter after another with a knife. Mr. Choi goes after the boy. The young man suddenly attacks Jae Yoon and suggests that they fight, assuring her that he has grown stronger over the years. They start fighting, but the girl is much faster and more agile than him. It's as if she foresees the guy's actions beforehand and easily dodges his attacks. The angrier he gets, the more fun Jae Yoon has. Eventually, she strikes him down. Dr. Beck tries to sneak away, but the girl shoots her second leg. Jae Yoon wants to end the boy, but Mr. Choi shows up and shoots her in the shoulder. Dr. Beck orders him to shoot the monsters in the head, but he finishes off the obnoxious supervisor. The young man's girlfriend appears in the hallway and attacks Mr. Choi. All the bullets bounce off the girl and she manages to put a knife in the man's sore arm. He strikes her in the leg and hits her several times in the head before tossing her aside like garbage. Finally, he gets to his main target, Jae Yoon. He tries to fight the girl, but her strength exceeds his by a thousand times. So, she crushes his head in a matter of seconds. During this time, the young man has had time to gain strength and is ready to fight his main rival again. He shows Jae Yoon the serum and promises to tell her where the lab is if she beats him. The boy distracts her attention while his girlfriend attacks Jae Yoon from behind. The girl shows lightning fast reaction and stops her opponent with one hand. Lastly, she shows off the ferocity of her strength and crushes her head, just as her opponent wanted her to. She uses telekinesis to block the boy's actions and plunges the knife into him. She urges him to name the location of the headquarters where the serums are made. The boy is amused by Jae Yoon's desire to go on with her normal life. He refuses to reveal the secret location, so the girl shoots him in the head. Breaking into a safe in the lab, she takes the supply of serums with her and burns the lab to the ground. 
Jae Yoon arrives at the hospital, where her mother lies. She gives her father most of the serums, which are supposed to slow the woman's dementia. As she says goodbye, Mr. Goose says that he knew all along about Jae Yoon's true nature. He guessed back when livestock in the neighborhood began to be slaughtered. The man wanted to get rid of her at the first opportunity, but his wife stopped him. She sincerely believed that their adopted daughter would be a good person if she grew up in love and care. The girl leaves, waving one last time to Myung Hee. Three months later, Jae Yoon shows up at the house of a woman who turns out to be Dr. Beck's twin sister. The girl demands the creation of a more resistant vaccine, which will be a permanent solution for her. Her biological mother, who has been hidden by Dr. Beck's sister all along, shows up next to Jae Yoon. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.